The number one health problem I work with today as I work with people is sleep deprivation. We're seeing that more and more, whether it's they're waking up to, uh, to go to the bathroom because they have prostate problems or they just can't fall asleep or they wake up in the night and they can't fall back asleep or they wake up say three o'clock in the morning and that's it. <clears throat> so as we look at the effects of sleep on the body, it has a huge impact on how healthy your family is. You know, we used to think that sleep deprivation was less than six hours a day. Uh, then we found with the Breezel Belloc study uh, that where they looked at 6,900 people over a 15 year period, we found that it, then we thought, well, maybe less than seven hours were sleep deprivation. But then they found that actually optimum time where the person lives the longest is between eight and nine hours of sleep. Harvard University, they're still saying less than seven. They moved it from six hours to seven hours. Uh, but if, if it's less than seven hours, they say that's sleep deprivation, but we're seeing them flirt more towards that eight hours now where they're talking about you really need that eight hours of sleep to be able to get that good rest for the body. But it's just not how many hours of sleep you have. You also will need to look at what's the quality of sleep. Is that person waking up? Are they breaking that REM sleep? Are they getting those four stages of sleep? Or are they waking up every hour, every two hours, and they start over again and start over again? And that means they still have pro they still can have sleep deprivation, even though they're getting eight hours sleep, seven hours sleep, because they're, it's interrupted and they're not good, getting good quality sleep. So why do we need sleep? Well, let me read some things to y'all here. This is amazing, the benefits of sleep. It restores, rejuvenates, and energizes the body and the brain. It restores rejuvenates and energizes the body and the brain. Now, when you look at what's the first thing you do in the day for your health, what is it? Well, when's the day start? Does it start at midnight? Does it start in the morning? When does the day start? Well, Genesis tells us the day starts when? When the sun sets. So what's the first major event that we do in the day, we sleep. It's kind of like our cell phones. You know, do we charge the cell phone tonight so that we can use it today? No, we charged it last night so that we can use it today. And many people look at sleep as, well, you know, I'm just plum tarred, I'm plum sleepy, but I'll get sleep tonight and that'll take care of me. That's looking at it backwards. We need to get sleep last night so that we have the energy to perform today the sleep tonight will give us the energy to perform tomorrow. So what are the, what are the benefits? Let's look at them again. Restores, rejuvenate, rejuvenates, and energizes the body and the brain. Alertness. Do you find that if you get a good night's sleep that you're more alert? Absolutely. Just look at kids in the classroom. I, I go into the school system and I teach nutrition. And, and I see kids with their heads down on, on, their, on, the, on the desk and they're sleeping. I say, when did you go to sleep last night? Oh, midnight, one o'clock. Well, of course they're tired. It affects alertness. It affects energy. I mentioned earlier when people come into me and they say, well, I need more energy. The first thing I ask them, how much water are you drinking? Number two, what time do you go to bed at night? What's the quality of sleep? And then I ask them what they're eating. Uh, are they exercising? Those are four major things that will increase your energy as you're looking out there today to increase that energy. And a lot, I know a lot of people come into me and they say, well, I'm just plum tarred. I don't have enough energy. What, how much are you drinking? What time are you going to bed? What's the quality of the sleep? Are you getting that eight hours sleep? Are you eating good nutrition? Are you eating that breakfast to get you through the morning? Are you eating that, uh, that noon meal to get you through the afternoon? A lot of people aren't. When I fly, let's say if I'm flying to Portland, Oregon, and I fly out of Knoxville, I want him filling up with fuel in Knoxville. I want him filling up in Dallas, and then I don't care if he fills up in Portland once we get there. I want him to fill up from Knoxville to Dallas, Dallas to Portland. And many people, they're not filling up in Knoxville, and they're not filling up in Dallas. They just fill up when they get to, to Portland, when they go to bed at night. And, and they wonder, why didn't they have energy through the day? They didn't fuel up. The other problem is they're not getting the sleep, and sleep is so important to have energy. It affects the mood. Do you know people with mood problems? I do. 
Maybe they need more sleep. Body weight. We find that sleep deprivation significantly affects body weight. You're more prone to gain weight or not lose weight if you're sleep deprived. Perception. Your perception is not as good if you don't have good uh, uh, sleep. Memory significantly affects memory. See, at night, in the evening, somewhere around 9 to midnight, we make what's called a memory hormone. And we take, and during that process we, process, we take from short-term memory and we put it into long-term memory. If you're not asleep, you're not doing that process of where you're taking that short-term memory to long-term memory. So it can affect memory. You're thinking, have you ever been just plumb tired and you just can't think right? You're just not as alert? Absolutely. Reaction time, we know that. And driving. I was uh, working a wreck on the interstate one time, and it was a drunk driver. And the state trooper puts him in jail. And I asked the state trooper, who was a sergeant, I said, uh, Jenkins, I said, what if instead of being drunk, that person had sleep deprivation? He said, could they pass the test? You know, could the same test they do for sobriety, could they, could they pass it? He said, sleep deprivation can do the same thing. He said, I'm putting them in jail. It is true. If we are sleep deprived, our reaction time driving is less. Our braking time is less. Have you ever been there driving when you're just plumb tired and you're driving home from a trip? Yes, it's very dangerous. So sleep deprivation can affect reaction time. Productivity. It's interesting as we look at productivity. Why do we have breaks at work? Uh, because people are more productive if they have a break, a rest. But what about the, the rest at night? If you don't have adequate sleep, we actually find if a person can have adequate sleep, especially specific hours of night, and we'll talk about that in just a moment, if we have those certain hours before midnight, we can be more productive then uh, then let's say you, you stay up late trying to work and you're, you're just you're, you're, you don't get as much accomplished but if you get more sleep you get more accomplished at one time and you actually can net more accomplished communication skills do you ever find when you're tired you just you don't have the best communication skills maybe with your spouse or your kids uh, have your kids ever annoy you and our grandkids and you get short with them it could be because you didn't get enough sleep last night. Uh, people are less creative. If you have a job that you need to be creative, you need to get adequate sleep. Safety. It's no question you're safer if you have adequate sleep as you do things throughout the day. And then just overall good health. We talked about the lymphatic system earlier as we talked about exercise. But we've now found that there's a, a lymphatic system in the brain. It's called the glymphatic system. And the glymphatic system kicks on around 9 o'clock at night to about midnight. And it does, it, it does a deep cleaning from about 9 to midnight. It does a thorough cleaning from about 10 o'clock to midnight. Uh, I'm assuming from 9 o'clock to 10 o'clock, it does a deep cleaning from 10 o'clock to midnight. It does a thorough cleaning and flushes the brain, just like the lymphatic system does throughout the rest of our body. But the brain, to be able to flush the toilet in the brain, during that between 9 and midnight, you got to be asleep. If you're not asleep, you're not cleaning the brain of all that waste. We've learned for years that the hours before midnight are worth twice the hours after midnight. The hours of sleep before midnight are worth twice the hours of sleep after midnight in what it happens in the body. So it's not just getting the eight hours sleep. It's not just getting the eight hours of uninterrupted sleep. It's also when did you go to bed? Try it out. I encourage you. Several years ago, I was at a convention in Michigan, and a buddy of mine that, um, that we grew up together, he's a, a doctor down in Florida, and he came up to me and he goes, we, he sees me in the uh, convention hall, and he says, well, I've got so much energy, you won't believe it. And I said, well, what are you doing? He goes, you just won't believe it. I have so much energy. And I said, well, what are you doing? He goes, you just won't believe it. I have so much energy than what I used to do. And I said, what are you doing? He says, I go to sleep at 9 o'clock at night. And I have found if I go to sleep at 9 o'clock at night, I have significantly more energy the next day. I'm more productive the next day. And people say, well, Walt, you know, I put the kids to bed. That's when my husband and I have time. That's when I watch a movie. 
Uh, that's when I get some chores done in the house. Well, whatever time you're going to bed and getting up, just back it back those hours before midnight and do it, get up those many hours earlier and do those things in there. You will find that your bodies will run significantly better. So sleep aids in, uh, what do we do for helping a person uh, if they're needing to go to sleep? Are there sleep aids? There is. Number one is a consistent bedtime. The body just has a consistent time that you get up and you eat breakfast, dinner, supper. Our bodies run a whole lot better if we have a consistent time that we eat breakfast, eat dinner, eat supper if you eat supper. The other is, is if you have a consistent time of when you go to bed. The body just does better. You all know with your kids. If you put to get your kids to bed, bed at 7.30 every night, it's like clockwork. If you put them to bed at 7.30 tonight, 11 o'clock tomorrow night, uh, 8 o'clock the next night, 11 o'clock the next night, the kids have a hard time settling down. The same is true to our bodies. We need that consistent time. The other one is, is use your bed for sleeping and with your spouse. If you're using your bed for watching television, if you're using it as a library to read, the brain gets confused. And more and more literature is coming out today that says if you're having problems sleeping, only use your bed what it, for what it's meant to. Not as a place to sit and watch TV, not as a place to read or, or whatever. Use that, go to bed, and use it for that bed what it's supposed to be used for. Uh, the other thing is you want a cool room. You don't want a hot room. The body sleeps better, and they've actually come out with this new bed that uh, it, uh, the bed is cool during the night, and then in the morning it starts warming it up, and that's what wakes you up. So if your room is, cold, is hot, you just don't sleep as well. And what's a great way to do that? Open your windows if you're in an area, especially in the wintertime. Uh, open those windows, get that fresh air in, get that cool air in, you'll sleep a whole lot better. Another key is have a tidy room. You want that room to be clean, you'll sleep a whole lot better. Another key is, is have the room just plumb dark, not even a light on a clock. You want to have that room totally dark, you'll actually sleep a whole lot better. There are some aids that can help you sleep, such as valerian, skullcap, hops, passion flower, uh, chamomile, uh, wild lettuce, those herbs can help to calm you down and help you sleep. There's some other things that you can use like magnesium. Magnesium is really good to help a person sleep at night. L-theanine, uh, 5-HTP, tryptophan, those are all supplements that can help you sleep. But the first thing you want to do is those key ones that are real simple. Uh, if you want tryptophan, get your trip tryptophan from the flaxseed. Get the sunshine so you can convert the tryptophan, that tryptophan into serotonin, then which will make melatonin at night. If you eat a light supper, you'll make more melatonin. If you go to bed at 9 o'clock, you'll make even more melatonin. Just do it naturally. Have that room clean. Have that room cool. Do those things that can help your body just fall asleep naturally. If you can't and you're still having some problems, try that magnesium to bowel tolerance. Uh, try those herbs, uh, uh, the valerian skullcap, hops, passion flower, chamomile, uh, uh, wild lettuce, those herbs that can calm the body down. And so there's a number of things, copaiba, which is an essential oil. Try those out. But as you look at going to sleep, it's not a cookie cutter. Uh, it's, uh, you've got to look at each person individually. Just like uh, if you take Benadryl, it may wake you up. If you take Benadryl, it may make you go to sleep. The same is true on sleep aids. And you just have to try which one that will work. The biggest thing is figure out how to get that good sleep. We'll see you next time.